There are people who travel the world to find partial solar eclipses, let alone a total solar eclipse. Some people say it is life changing. We are having some of those vis visitors come from around the world to our area. Yeah. Cities have been planning for this for years. I know we've been talking a lot about the total solar eclipse happening in just a few days. There's a lot to figure out, a lot to know about where to go and what this all means. Our KSAT weather team takes the reins for this KSAT Explains. Let's put it this way, most people don't get to see one in their lives. If you're not willing to travel, the chances of you seeing one are very slim. In a given location, the average time between eclipses is 375 years. In fact, the last total solar eclipse in San Antonio happened in third the path of totality. So with that in mind, we want to start with the basics. Here's what you need to know when it comes to viewing and enjoying the eclipse. Firstly, it's a question we get a lot. Do you need glasses? And the answer is yes, you do. The only .com, you can actually zoom in. And the first thing you notice is that San Antonio and Bear County only half is in the path of totality. Type in your neighborhood, you can search for it or you can zoom in and you'll also see how long totality will last. One of the biggest questions that we've been getting are kids missing school. Well, some school districts have canceled classes on Monday, mainly up in the hill country. And that's because traffic is going to be nuts. You can head over to KSAT.com for the latest information on which school districts are doing what. But the bottom line is this event is going to be bringing thousands of people to our area. So do expect some traffic jams as well as lines and crowds. And because of that, some counties have already issued disaster declarations. Cities like Kerrville and Bernie have been preparing for April's total eclipse for years. Various departments and organizations have worked together to plan for the distribution of resources and extreme traffic. Traffic is definitely the biggest thing. TxDOT, DPS, FBI, local, state, county officials all across the board. We've been meeting with everybody just to make sure we're all on the same page. October's annular eclipse was a test run, giving officials a chance to make adjustments for April. Kerr and Kendall County signed disaster declarations to activate their emergency management plans while preparing for traffic. And the temporary population increase means food and fuel are also going to be in demand. So our retailers are preparing for this. They know that there are going to be more people. So they too are planning for that increase so that way they can um, adjust accordingly. And while those conditions will be monitored closely, leaders say there are a few things you can do before venturing out. Printing out maps that you might need or anything that you might resource digitally, have it printed out before you get here, um, carry some extra cash and bringing supplies with you. That's because supplies could run low and GPS might be hard to access with thousands of people coming to Bear County and the Hill Country. We've never had anything to compare this to, um, so we are anticipating to easily double to triple in population. I very early got on and booked my flight from Auckland to Houston, which I picked up for 760 New Zealand dollars, which is like 500 American. It was so cheap. We will definitely see a significant spike, definitely in sales tax and in hotel occupancy tax. Um, so it'll be a nice little boom for our, our local economy. An opportunity that isn't available to just any city in the United States, but one that's happened twice in a matter of six months in the San Antonio area. It was a blessing you know, that comes in with having not only one eclipse, but two eclipses, which is incredibly rare for one only destination. If you plan to hit the roads near the time of the eclipse, here are a few safety tips from TxDOT. Expect heavy traffic and sudden stops by drivers. Be on alert for distracted pedestrians looking to the sky. Keep your headlights on while driving, even in the daylight. Do not wear your eclipse glasses while driving and always keep your eyes on the road. Kerrville and Fredericksburg are going to be the center of the science world when the eclipse happens with big names coming to see the event. The telescope at Shriners Loftus Observatory will be pointed slightly away from it in hopes of accomplishing one astronomer's goal. But Dr. Alan Hale, uh, of uh, one of the people who discovered the comet Hale-Bopp, that's his name. He wants to use this telescope to observe comets as they pass close to the sun, which is impossible unless something covers the sun. Arvison plans to watch the eclipse here on the university lawn with about 2,000 other campus visitors. We have had folks that are coming from Germany. We have folks that are coming from San Diego, Los Angeles. We have Michigan. Um, we have folks coming from Tennessee. We have folks coming from all over the United States. Bus loads of people. Coming up, we're going to take a look back at the history of the eclipse. What did San Antonio look like when the last total solar eclipse occurred? 
sure you've seen a few partial solar eclipses in your lifetime. In fact, we had an annular eclipse in 2023 and a partial solar eclipse in 2017. But a total solar eclipse, now that is a rarity. In fact, the last time the path of a total solar eclipse passed over the area we know as San Antonio was back in 1397, 627 years ago. Think of San Antonio's history. What do you think about? Probably the Alamo and other Spanish missions. But this last total solar eclipse happened hundreds of years before the Spanish even colonized the area. So what did life look like 600 years ago in the Alamo city before the Alamo even existed? We have talked about historic Texas as having 11,000 streams. So the water would have been plentiful. A little bit different from today. We're struggling with that in drought. But water would have been plentiful. It would have been a bit greener. And these waters were sacred to the native people of what we now call San Antonio in South Texas. So today we know them as Coahuitecans. Their tribal lands were all of northeastern Mexico and South Texas. The Payaya, Papanac, Tilihai, names associated to the bands and clans of of the uh, different families that lived in the area. An incorrect narrative around the Coahuitecans is that they were hunter-gatherers aimlessly wandering around. However, what we're learning today is that it was just the opposite. It was a very high level of sophistication that just wasn't understood at the time. And it's with that level of sophistication that the Coahuitecans would be experiencing the eclipse in 1397. We can speculate that it would have been a spiritual experience too because all the celestial beings were faces of God. It would have just been a moment of validation of their belief system of two becoming one. In fact, there's evidence of the Spanish using these beliefs in converting locals at Mission Concepcion. One of the frescoes up in one of the rooms shows that the two coming together, right? The sun and the moon coming together as one. It probably drew fear, it probably drew love. Every emotion that um, human beings would would have today. On April 8th, it'll be through those human emotions that we will be connected to the people who viewed a similar total solar eclipse 627 years ago. But wait, how do we know an eclipse actually happened in 1397? Trust me when I tell you it's a lot of math and science. And one person that can explain it to us is Dr. Angela Speck, who heads up the astronomy and physics department at UTSA. She breaks it down here. Scan this QR code to find out how scientists know when and where future eclipses will happen and can use that math to find out when they happened in the past. KSAT 12 is your eclipse authority station. And just remember this once in a lifetime total solar eclipse will happen Monday, April 8th with totality occurring close to 1.30 in the afternoon. Yep, and we are gonna have live coverage across the area on the day of from Fredericksburg to Bernie to even San Antonio. And the cool part is you can tune in on your phone, your device on KSAT.com. You can join us and we'll be right there along with you to watch this extraordinary event. We're excited.